Oh, the joys of old car ownership. I'm gonna have to do his headlining. I'm not looking forward to doing headlining, I'll tell you that. Anyway, happy holidays. Merry Christmas. I hope you had a fantastic holiday period. It's been biblical in terms of the rain that's been coming down in the UK at least. And I just haven't been able to do anything, any filming, any car tinkering, anything at all. Until today, today, fortunately, it's actually stopped raining. But I thought I'll get in here because it's windy and it's horrible. And unless you can hear me when I'm inside. Uh, there's a few things to do right now in the present with the XM, finishing touches to stuff. But I'm gonna show you uh, things in the way back machine that I've done which include, obviously, as you've already seen, the old disco lights, which are fabulous. Getting them sorted out, getting the uh, windscreen washers sorted out as well, because they were, they were both dead, front and rear. The back seat staying in the position, because weirdly, I've never seen that before, but that failed on an MOT, for, or the, on the MOT, for the backrest not staying in position, which is, okay and I get some new tyres so I'm just going to show you the stuff that I filmed back when I did it I'm going to stay in the uh, the relative safety and comfort of a well I was going to say dry XM but, but it's not and you can see the stuff I've done so I shall uh, I'll see you in a minute so a quick recap, uh, obviously from last episode, which was removing the ugliest tow bar in the world. As you can see, uh, it's left uh, everything, debris, the works. This was minging behind here. And uh, no wonder it wasn't really working very well with the lights, with the, the standard of wiring. It's pretty janky. With the boot stripped out, I needed to strip it all out because I was doing some other jobs with the, um, the rear seat back as well. You can just see to the concrete in there. This has been used to lug a lot of stuff. But what I did find, as well as just the general state of health, I did find a broken part, which was the uh, the boot release mechanism uh, has got a thing there, a broken wire for the boot light. So that's why that wasn't working. At least I found that, but I've actually got another part coming for that. Anyway, I cleared it all out. Um, that's the, the remnants of it. It just looks pretty janky, doesn't it? I'm gonna have to do another a thorough clean in there again, but this was just to get it tidy so I could work on it. And here we are. Here's uh, everything that I stripped out with the tow bar. Way too much old dodgy electrics here, um, or dodgy wiring. Really like nasty stuff. And that, I believe, it was part of the problem. That's actually an earthing wire for the tow bar electrics. So that's been screwed into just a place, you know, a, a bare metal part of the place. And it was uh, it was pretty rusty through, but I could see that they had spurred off using some connectors, proper connectors, but they'd uh, spurred it off from that lighting unit. So I just wanted to... I just wanted to see what the actual screw was like for the uh, for the earth because it took quite a bit to get off as well. But just by uh, removing this, you can see the the general condition and just how bad it had uh, deteriorated. I'm quite surprised it didn't snap off, to be honest, when I did that. But there you go. That is why it was so bad. That is corroded so badly. Anyway, that's removed. And that uh, that whole bit with the, uh, the collection of wires before it and that, that is uh, that is removed and out of, the, out of the, the system, as it were, out of the circuit. This is the actual correct earth connection for the rear, uh, rear lights. So I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll give it a quick clean just to make sure that all the mating surfaces are, uh, are okay. Reinstalled that, and actually all I needed to do was just reconnect the connectors for the lights uh, with the tow bar stuff taken out of the equation now, um, and put back. So 
that really was uh, my first chance to see whether it was going to make a difference or not. Let's have a look if it does. Promising. Very promising. Hey, full house. Look at that. No disco at all. I mean, I know those those lights were fun, but not on the road, obviously. How exciting is that? We now have working boot light. And there you go. This is uh, this is what I mentioned earlier. The I had the part. I bought it from a collection of um, bits and bobs from a uh, another XM. I think actually it was a Mark II XM, but this still works perfectly. And I've got the thing working again. So I've got a boot light. Yes. After the success of Operation Disco Lights at the back, I think it's time I tackled another one off the uh, MOT failure list. This time it's the washers not washing for the windscreen. So I have done zero checks on this. I don't know if there's no water in it. Um, I've not even, I think I tried once and I didn't hear anything. Uh, I just left it at that. But I don't know if there's any water in it, if the fuse has gone or if it's a knackered motor or once again, a myriad of dodgy earths because that's what this car seems to have, unfortunately. So, Let's have a go at diagnosing what's at fault for that and tick another one off the list. All right. Uh, first things first. I'm a realist. That's its business. Where are we? Wash wipe. Okay, let's go. The only thing is that it's gonna that is gonna smudge all that crud. Oh well. There we go. Uh, what one's what? Is that the end or is it pulling? I can't even hear it to be honest, so... Oh dear. That's just painful. Uh, what's the end one then? Oh, there isn't an end one. That looked like a... <laughs> looked like a knob. <laughs> now I look like a knob. <laughs> Right, okay, uh, so that is clearly not doing... Oh, yeah, because that's the that's the rears, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Still fumbling my way around, anyway. Uh, right, okay, then. So, uh, next thing. I, the problem is I can't hear anything. So, that always... Boot lid open. That's interesting. The boot lid... Is closed. Right front door is open. That's. Is it? I thought I'd close that. Well, is it no? Right, let's let's see if I close that bad boy. Right. Sorry, this is a complete and utter tangent. Is that boot open? Boot lid open. There were some broken wires at the back of that. I wonder if it's, uh, yeah, I wonder if that's the reason. Right, okay. Yes, it's just them, that's fine, that's all right. Right, okay, uh, so, waffling away. Next thing is to find the fuse box, wherever that may be. Right, well, it's a bit of a bust with the uh, fuses. Nine and, nine and 32 were uh, okay. So, um, next up, just gonna try putting some actual water in it, just in case, just, isn't, just in case it's the quietest motor in the world and it just needs water in there. So we'll pop it in, I know it's not gonna work, but we'll pop it in, see what happens. And then if not, we're just gonna have to jack it up, get the wheel arch off uh, and check the motor and check the connections, see whether they're all right. And if not, then maybe the motor's dead. We'll give it a go. Put some aqua in there. Uh, 
are we ready? <laughs> no. Nothing, nada. I mean, it was inevitable really, wasn't it? But uh, it's wheel arch off and get the, get the washer bottle with the um, motor in there out and we'll have a look. Right, well, I've got the, um, got the wheel arch off and <laughs> it's, it's hiding uh, a small garden and it just sits inside here. But uh, this previous owners really into their gardening because uh, on this side, um, yeah, we uh, yeah we will be showing you this. I'll be showing you more of this. This is one of the reasons why I found the MOT because it doesn't have any metal anymore here. Anyway, yeah, look at this. Look, look at this. Oh. Trapped mud ASMR. Do you want me to do it? Let me, just, let me scoop it out. Oh, <laughs> look at this. Stand a chance, did it? Now, is that a design flaw, or is that another case of someone deciding to hoon it around their local field? Gosh, surely, surely this level of mud isn't normal. I get it. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to carry on um, trying to get most of this, uh, most of this uh, cut price ground force exhibit out of the way. And I'll try and show you uh, what's going on with the, uh, with the pump. All right, well, here's the aftermath. Managed to get it off. Managed to get most, both motors out. Oh, what a flaff it was. Flaff? What a faff. Oh, nice and clean, huh? Anyway, even this was an absolute pig. That one is impossible unless you take the scuttle out which in itself isn't great because you've got to take these very, very delicate trims off, which are prone to breaking, just to be able to get this off. I am going to have to do it because it's absolutely, well, it was. I've pulled out a small forest of leaves from there. This, I discovered this was undone. Uh, I've put that back in. I think that powers the light, the light but that no, ain't working, surprise, surprise. Anyway, light's going now. I've done what I needed to do for that. Next, oh, I presume this is the main motor. It's quite a, a fatty, this one. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll test them out, see whether they spin or not, if they do anything. And if not, well, get them replaced. If not, it's something to do with that may be an earthing issue, earthing you say. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, I've got to pack up a bit now, so <sighs> until tomorrow. And so tomorrow was actually about a week and a bit later, but I managed to get another motor. They're all fairly generic stuff and reinstalled, all cleaned out inside as well. Reinstalled and voila! Wipers and washers. 
I mean, the, the wipers are absolutely knackered, so um, don't judge. But look, even the rear one's working. Very, very pleased. That's a good little fix. Biff, baff, poof. So now you get to see me fiddling. Well, actually, it's just pictures, to be honest. I didn't bother filming it, but you get to see me fixing the this, the, the backrest portion of the rear seat. It, I still don't get what the issue was. Maybe at the time there was something, I don't know, affecting it where it wouldn't, it just wouldn't latch in. I did find one of them, this side I think was loose, that I had to adjust. But when even when I got it, it was still fixed in position. I could not, I could not make it move at all. But I stripped it down, made sure that both uh, both sides, where the the thing sort of goes into the catch, that was all positioned correctly because it was a little bit out. But uh, while I was already knee deep in stripping the boot out because of the wiring, I thought I might as well just do it. So as you can see with the pictures. Um, it was just a case of stripping a few bits back. And of course I had the, uh, the drama of losing one of the washers. Now usually losing washers isn't that, that bad a, a deal, but it was fundamental in having these things fit uh, in the place it needed to, to fit as the, the cylinder that goes into the catch needs these two washers. And if you don't have them, it just wobbles around. It doesn't fit properly could I find this thing? It just disappeared. Until of course, I found it tucked away, sort of in between the sound deadening and the uh, sort of whatever that material is, of that side cover. Of course it had fallen there, fallen there. I'd already gone out and tried to buy a myriad of different washers that didn't fit and then found that. So hence my part in shot picture, because I was deeply unimpressed. So anyway, that's done. That's another one ticked off the list, which is really good. And on to tires, because I've got some nice new rubber. And last, but definitely not least, are the new tires that I've got. I got them some time ago, and I went for, I know, it's all a bit of a cliche, I suppose, but I went for some Michelins. I actually got told by my good friend Aras, who owns the uh, the perfect version of this car, that I should stick to the Michelins, which I've done. So, gone for Primacy Fords, which I think, to be honest, other than those uh, cross climates, are the only other options you can get for 195.65.15s. For the very, very limited run I've had around my estate, just to make sure when I did various fixes that car was working all right these ride beautifully way way better than the terrible stuff that was on there and i really i just cannot wait to get out there and experience it on all different road surfaces so yes very pleased with that and that's another thing ticked off the list because i think it was either this one or uh, the other one on that side anyway um that was the actual an actual major fail I know everything else was failures, but that one was like the dangerous one. So getting all four tyres done, completely brand new rubber, is excellent. I purposely haven't bothered putting the uh, the fabulous wheel tunes back on just yet, because obviously I'm whipping the wheel off and doing all sorts of stuff. And I'm going to be whipping the wheel off again to attack the rust, which is uh, going to be the, the next major thing. Well, that's it, getting pretty much up to date now. That was a lot of the, uh, the jobs ticked off on that one. The only thing really left to show you, other than sort of really up to date things, is when I sorted out the brakes, the uh, dozer, dosa valve, that um, I think up and down explained very, very well how the mechanism works for uh, the the brake system, brake suspension and power steering. I sort of learned the hard way. I wish he'd done his video about six months ago so I could have understood the process a bit better. But um, it's not his fault, is it? Um, or is it? Is it your fault, Rich? I don't know. Either way, 
I did get through it with the help of Russ and, and some rather poor explanations on the internet. But that is all for a future video, so I'll show you in a separate thing just what I had to do. But really, um, what we've got next is fixing the rear bumper because one of the mounts, if you remember, completely corroded away. So that's going to be my first welding job because I've got to weld the captive nut back in position on a plate and then get that plate back onto the bumper so I can fix it properly. And then after that, with all those welding skills that I've just learned, the big one, getting both sides, not the roof, uh, both sides of the underneath sorted out. And then once I've done that, look at it. It's been there for ages. Got to get something done with it. Build it or burn it. I know a lot of you just ain't burn it, but I love that thing. I'm going to look after it. I'm going I'm to do right by it. Either way, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the new subscribers as well. That's very welcome. Um, I love it if uh, people are subscribing to it and showing a bit of support. Very, very welcome. Thank you. And I will see you in the next one, which hopefully shouldn't be too far away. See you then.